that happened with this door, it would sometimes lock intermittently, intermittently and would unlock intermittently. And then it got to the point where it just would not lock or unlock at all with the button. You'd have to do it manually every single time. That's a little annoying, especially it's a back door. You know, if it's your driver door, maybe you can get away with it. You know, the, like the button's right there at your hand. Like this, you have to reach around or open the door. It's, it's annoying. So the door lock actually needs to be replaced. How do you do that? Well, you need to remove the door panel, and in this case, the inner door skin and the door handle. And you have to loose, you have to unbolt the window from the window tracks. So the window tracks on the inner door skin. You have to take the inner door skin off to get to the door actually. So it's it's a bit involved. The annoyingness is overcoming the involvedness of this to make this project happen. So we're gonna walk through that, take everything apart, put it back together, and the hope is that it works afterwards, but I feel pretty confident that it is the door lock actuator because it just it makes sense. I think I probably picked the best weather all year to do this. It's cold, it's rainy. Great, wonderful. So I'm taking out this door panel because I need to replace the door lock actuator. How does it come out? Well, that's always a good question. You know, these little plastic covers are very small, like you need a metal pick. And just a note to remember, if you notice the little access port is at the top. When you put it back in, put it back at the top so it looks factory because you had like off to the side or corner or somebody's gonna know, somebody's removed the door panel before. If you put it back like it came from the factory, it just, it looks better and no one will ever know. So you need to pull this one out and I just use a plastic pick. Looks just like this. It's good to get in there and pull that out. Just be gentle, it is plastic since it picks metal. You could tear it or stretch it, you don't want to, so it moves slowly. Then I know there's a little panel. Yeah, it's a little gross. A little in there, use the metal pick again. And I'm guessing this like this little cover behind the handle. This little, let's see if I can get it without the sun. This little cover's a little loose. I'm guessing that might be a cover that comes out too. That looks to be the three screw access points. Uh, if it doesn't come out, we'll know. Because usually you have a couple screws and there's just plastic clips all around the perimeter that pop out. So I'm gonna assume that's the case if it's not coming. Uh, just if you go slow, you're not really gonna mess it up. Like if it's not coming, you're like, huh, did I miss something? Maybe you did. Some of these just plastic panel clips can be a little difficult to remove, but that's why I'm doing this. We're gonna see what is going on. After you've taken out all, you know, the three screws, three, yeah, the three screws, one at the handle, one in the little pole, and then this one on the end. Which, don't forget this little piece of trim because the drawer panel needs to come up, so you'll need to get this out of the way. So this is re a reenactment. Basically, to get this out, I just pop it out, kind of break it in there, falls out. Well, what also fell out was this. I put it back in there so it wouldn't fall out, just so you could see it. This screw fell out when the panel came out. Now you can see it goes in there. I think it's probably this exterior trim right there, but nothing seems loose. Uh, that's the only place I could possibly see that this thing should go. Why it just fell out, I don't know. How would it get loose? Like I wouldn't think vibration would cause this to unscrew and come out. That's kind of weird. I don't quite get it. I will say, you know, I have some issues with Hyundai's engineering. Look at the foam on that. They put that on there so that this thing will not rattle. I do like that. Uh, that screw, yeah, I don't know. Can I be very detail oriented and specific about cute on screws? Yes, I can, but you know what? That means I don't lose any screws. And if you notice, these two screws, they are slightly different. I like to put things back exactly as they came apart. So I'm gonna label everything to make sure I get that done. All right, so this is our progress. You can see each of these white little clips is a clip that goes into a hole in the door. I don't know if you quite see that, but there, it's there. This little plug connects right there. You just hit that tab on the top right there, pull it out. Then you have to disconnect the locking and unlocking, or I guess the door handle, locking and door handle cables. And see if I can hold everything at one time here. So to do that, you can see there is just a little, little tab right here. You just push that, and this little thing will swivel out. And your door panel is loose from the door. That is what your door looks like with no door panel. A lot of stuff going on there. Door. That is what the door looks like without a panel. So you can see. This is where that screw in the end, screwed in right there, nice little bracket on the side. All these little holes, this is where the plastic clips just clipped in, they're tension fit. I think I may have broken a couple getting them out. That's kind of the way it goes. And especially since it's cold, you know, plastic is a little more flexible when it's warm. Uh, so a lot of wiring going on, a lot of stuff. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to remove this latch. I think that latch is all part of the door actually, like the latch is here. And the door actually is all, I think it's all one thing. This inner skin has to come out. I think the window channel is part of this inner skin. So 
I don't know. There's some things to figure out. I intend to figure them out. So this was the part that connected to the latch. So you can see you've got the wire to the little cylinders. If you look at the door panel, you can see how they connect. It just, that wire fits right in between these two pieces. That little cylinder fits right in there. Same thing here. So you get a good idea of how those pieces fit together. So when you put it back together, you know to get it in there right. And I think that plastic thing also, it slots in here a specific way. So, you know, as long as it snaps into place, it should all work fine when you're putting it back together. So looking at my door panel and my plastic clips, it looks like I only have one casualty. This one, it is blue. I don't know why it's blue. All the rest of them are white, like that. Uh, none of the rest of them are white. This blue one did, and I don't really know. I have to look on the ground, see if I can see the end of it or where it dropped, just to see what it looked like. So I'm just kind of curious. But everything else, all the other little clips look to be intact, which is awesome. You can see, oh, there's a little bit of spray glue where they sprayed on that probably faux leather vinyl covering. A lot of like a lot of little padding and things. I like that. You know, they don't want things to squeak. Kind of curious about that. Like, why is there that glob of foam? Like on the on the inside, it's just the uh, it's just the panel. So I don't know what's going on with that foam, why it is, what it is. I assume it has a purpose. I just don't know it. All right, I've taken off all the bolts on this inner skin. I've yet to pull it off because here is what I'm thinking and guessing. I'm thinking this, if you pull this off, there's gonna be a bolt that connects to the outer door handle because the outer door handle somehow connects to, I don't know, whatever this door actually is. It connects to something. Uh, I will need to undo all these little Torx bits to, because I think the latch, I need to check, I've got it. I'm not having looked at it today, but I think the actuator, the latch and everything is one unit and somehow that connects to the door handle. I'm not sure how that works, but, or no. That's all one unit, so that connects to the door handle, and I think that screw is probably the screw to get to the door handle. Just based on other cars I worked on, there's usually like a little thing like that that goes to the door handle. Uh, seeing these rivets here and here, that has got to be the window track. So I'm thinking this little plug, I pulled it out. I didn't really see anything, but both if you lower the window, that's probably the, the window track's right here, and so you can access the screw that connects the window to the window uh, track. And so I can connect that. I think I'm, I'm hoping I can just lift the window up and hold it in place somehow and pull pull this out. I think that's how everything works. I really don't know. Most of the things I worked on don't have like an entire inner panel. It's just you have these little access holes to get into the stuff. But that is my guess based on what I'm seeing right now. So I pulled off this little cap at the corner and you know what that is right in that hole? That is the bolt to the exterior door handle. As I guess, I guess right, what is my prize? Uh, nothing, that's okay. Need to figure out what size that is. And I'm guessing, I need to kind of look in there and figure exactly how everything fits together, how it all comes apart, so I know what I'm doing. But you see, this is the top of the latch. This is part of the actuator, because I know like the thing I have is big. Actually, I probably should look at that just so I know exactly what I'm doing here. That'll probably give me some amount of insight. I'll have to go run and get that. But that is, as I guessed, I'm not, dealt with the window yet i'm probably gonna have to lower it. i know i had to plug it back in to lower it because I, I know in other vehicles if you unplug the switch it won't work even if you're using like the master control it just won't work so you need to plug it back out so i'll do that i'll actually look at this latch and see what i have because i know it's got these long cables coming off of it and i know it's a big box here i just need to look at it make sure i know how everything hooks back to you guys and i how to unhook it helpful tip when you're undoing things unscrewing things you know i've got this bucket for bolts and screws i've got this piece of paper, I lay in some screws, just so I know what I'm doing and keep up with everything. If you don't keep up with it, it's gonna be hard to put it back together. That's how you end up with extra screws when you're done. Here is my replacement door lock actuator. So this makes, I almost lost it. Here is my replacement door lock actuator. This makes a lot of sense. This little cable coming out of the top, that must go to the door handle. I don't know how it curves around, I gotta figure it out. These two long cables, I'd seen those coming through the inner door panel. There is a little plug here, makes sense since this is electronically controlled. Doesn't look like there's any other screws, it's just these three right here at the latch. I uh, do need to get to the exterior door handle, and I'm guessing I'll pop that out. I mean, somehow, and just with the way the door is shaped, this must curve around somehow. I don't exactly know. I guess when I pop the door handle out, I'll figure that out. I might see if I can see it in the car, see what I see. But either way, I think the door handle's gonna have to come out so I can access that little 
connection. That's it, that is my actuator. Gotta take out the entire inner skin. So once you loosen this bolt from the inside, this piece, just pull the door handle out, and this piece will just pop right out once it's loose enough. Now I was afraid about the screw falling in, and got a magnet from the other side to try to pull it out. And it seems to be kind of stuck in some shape, form, way, or fashion. That's good. That way it won't fall into the door panel and I'll have to waste much time getting it out. Now this piece, this should just pull out, pull out and slide this way. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this down see if we can do that. Alright, so it should be. Open the door. Pull out. Oh, there it goes. Is that all there is to it? I wonder if it just snaps back into place, go another way. That's a good question. I'd like to know how to put this thing back together. There's a little seal here, we're gonna take off. There's a screw there, so that is the other side. This screw here is the other side of the whole door latch assembly. I'm gonna put all my seals back on my door handle. Cause I would like to keep up with those. But I'm curious if this thing just, I'm guessing it just slides, kind of pops right back in there like it popped out. Well, that is the exterior door with no handle. Let me get this screw. That should be, once I get the torques on the door latch, that should be unbolted. That's have to take care of the window. So this is just good design. You don't even have to loosen this bolt all the way. You get loose enough, it just slides forward. That is, that's just good design. Good, easy design where I don't have to disassemble everything and lose screws in the process. As you follow along, I can't remember if I said it, but the inner door skin, 10 millimeter bolt, the exterior door handle, eight millimeter bolts, and this door latch, that is, door latch is T30 Torx. So I got the window lowered, and you can see the screw right there. Actually, it might be a little too low. Great, I'll have to hook that cord back up and raise a little bit, hopefully not. But I did inadvertently shut the door, and that's a little bit of an oh crap moment, because there's no interior door handle, no exterior door handle. Give pair of pliers, this lower piece, this lower connection right here, grab the pair of pliers and pull it, that will open the door. So if you do inadvertently lock it, or if you inadvertently shut the door, you're not completely out of luck, you can just pull on that, that will open the door. Let me see if I can get this window loose, and I, the window, I should be able to just take the door, if I loosen that, I'm hoping this thing will just come right out as is, I don't know, I guess, I don't know, we're about to find out, we're about to find out what happens. I think if I loosen that screw, that should separate the window from the door from this window track and the door inner door skin i sure hope so that's the goal so you can see here that gray piece is the window part of the window channel attached to the window channel that piece you can see right behind it that that is the glass and they are detached Let's see if i can I'll just raise the glass you can see they're no longer lined up the screw be really careful that screw i'd use a bit of a larger Phillips head because I didn't want to strip it and it felt like I was going to strip it. So be careful with that because that screw is in there really tight. It has not been a fun day to work on this. It's just, I picked the worst. I mean, I guess it could be worse. It could be a blizzard or a monsoon or something, but it's rainy, it's cold, it's it's not great. I think I have everything unbolted, disconnected. I'm going to soon find out when I try to remove this inner panel. But I think we're there. I hope we're there and we're going to find out. And once that's done, then we replace this because it's the latch, the actuator, all of it's in one which seems crazy to me i would think you don't want to separate it but hey you can charge more for parts you have to replace one little part because they're all together in one big component so we're inside the door and i don't know you can see that yellowish white piece of plastic that is more door handle on this side is the door skin well that black vertical right there is the window channel the like the outside edge channel of the window and i don't think i can get this thing out without removing that channel which means i have to remove the window which means i have to remove a whole lot of crap like, it's kind of a stupid design. Why? Why is it like that? Why is there not a way to separate this inside the door somewhere? I don't have to take an entire window to replace my door actuator. That certainly, I'm going to look at this a little bit closer, but I think that's it because that channel is between the handle and the door latch, and I don't think it's going to move this way because the whole thing has to move towards the front of the car to pull out. And I don't think it's going to because that window channel is in the way. I mean, what in the world? Can I move that channel a little bit to get this out and not take the entire window? I don't know. I'm gonna look into that too. I, what in the world? So I've gotten the door panel out of the way. This part here, it slides uh, this way. No, no, it slides this way towards the door panel. It's held in by, it's got a couple of plastic clips here that you need to lift this part up and push the whole thing this way. 
and sets her from the door panel. These, I uh, just sniffed them, they went through the door panel. These are boots you can push through. And the question is, can I finagle this around the window track or am I still kind of stuck in the same spot? I don't know, at least now I can see a little bit better what's going on here. And I really, I still want to have to take out the window in the window track, but I'm concerned it will come down to that. I'm going to see if I can maybe wiggle this down, around, or do something to keep my window in place. So this bolt is the bottom of the last attachment to the window track. And it looks like if I just undo this nut, this bottom of the track will push in and I can slide everything kind of around, like push this back, slide everything down and around. It looks like it'll work. I just, my concern with taking out the window is this. You know, am I gonna get into pulling these trims out? I and mean, the window track goes up into here. Usually to get the window track out, you need to pull out the trim, the interior and the exterior trim, then get the window track out. And I, like, there's there's a rubber seal here. Am I gonna pull that out? I just, I don't, there's a lot of stuff I don't want to deal with. And I'm just concerned about pulling that stuff out. And then, you know, do you tear seal? Do you scratch the outside? Because the outside has this piece of trim here. The outside has this piece of trim here. Does this have to come off? There's just a lot to it, and I don't want to damage when I have to, especially outside. I'm trying to keep that looking nice. But I think this will work. Well, again, step by step. Look at this. This sucker is out. So I did, I loosened this bolt, also loosened this upper one to give me a little bit of space. And then you just gotta get a little rough with it. Just, you gotta slide it down. Let's see, you get light here. You just gotta work around some of this inner structure. But I did get it out. Didn't have to remove the window. And so now, yeah, this thing is fun. So now I get through, you know, there's a lot of bracketry on here. Like the white, this white bracket, this yellow gray bracket, they stay. And it's just this black part that changes. The wires come with it. You can see how this one somehow, somehow fits in there. There it is. That's, that's going to be curious getting it out. But it's out. That's good. All right. Well, I'm going to move this whole... Uh, switch this out. I move this to inside where it's warm and not freezing cold and raining and switch out this regulator But we are in good shape. Didn't ever move the window. Happy about that So first step This plastic is removing that. There's a little push button tab down here to release that Push button tab up here to release that and then once you release those this middle one is the last one to release and this piece will Well, it should oh, it's so That piece is loose. So since I'm just taking it off here, I'm gonna put it right on to my new one so that I know exactly you know, I don't I don't mix it up remove one piece replace it can do this one-handed there it goes it's going thinking about it they need you one hand I'll tell you what all right I'm gonna have to hand that one but that's where it goes uh, next you see this gray this gray piece that is attached to the door handle I'm gonna install that one next. You can see you gotta get this stuff out of the tabs just to free it up. The new one does not have this weather strip, but since it's half attached to the gray plastic, half to the new one, I'll just hopefully unstick that. If not, I've got some weather stripping and I'll do that. It looks like there's some tabs right there. Tab right here on this side, a tab right there. And once that releases, I'll put that on. And then it's just a matter of disconnecting this top door handle piece, reconnecting it. And uh, there you have it. So just releasing this piece, it's right in there. I had a bit of a tough time. It didn't pop out as easy as I wanted to. What I did, I held it, I had a screwdriver on the bottom end like this, and I was putting it with my top hand on this side, and it eventually popped out. It did take a little bit of force, but that one is out. I don't, I think it just, it should just come out right in there. Uh, that's another two-hander. So releasing this piece, can you see it, it loops around, goes in. What you need to do, I'm not sure there's a good angle for it. You push this down, it slides out, and you kind of see that. That's what it looks like. You just need to push it forward, and that ball slides out the side. It all kind of goes in the side. That's more because that's how your new latch is going to go in. So, given that disconnecting this gray plastic, you've got two little tabs here. So, this whole gray plastic piece goes up to there. You've got one, I don't know if I get one. Yeah, one on the back right there another one on the back right through there that's how piece comes up now you do have this piece of weather stripping i'm going to try to keep it intact and see if i can just pull it off of what i'm replacing uh if not uh i know i've got some new weather stripping i'll replace that's just to keep your door quiet to stop squeaks because plastic on plastic it's going to squeak and i'm willing to bet that's all it is maybe it is doing a little bit of sealing to where you don't get air flowing through the latch I don't know, because I, th I think that's the case to go all the way around. 
Maybe not, but I am going to either try to reuse this or replace it. So here's enough, my new actuator. Doesn't have any clips right there. Is that a bad thing? Uh, I mean, I'm kind of stuck in this deal. This is an arranged marriage and I can't get out of it. But it's got the two on the back, so we're gonna go with it. When you're putting this thing back, remember, it goes right behind here and then you loop it around. And so this end loops all the way around through here. So you want the little plastic piece to snap into there, but first get your little ball and get your little ball into that slot right there and then snap into place because otherwise it's gonna be a little more difficult. Out with the old, in with the new, all my pieces are back in place. So now the tricky part is I will have to slide this and snap it back in place on the door panel. I will have to plug in this clip, but I did it before. So I don't think I'll have much problem putting it back in. Uh, and plus now that I've been for seeing how all this stuff works and fits together. So now, we have crested the mountain all downhill from here. Get this piece snapped back into the door panel and definitely don't forget to plug this up because if you were to snap that in, put it in back and forget to plug that up, you'd be in for a world of hurt because nothing's gonna work without this plug. This is what does everything. And yeah, it's, it's curious, like why did only one fail? Why did it fail at all? I don't know, you know, things just happen. Could be factory assembly, could just be wear and tear, could be who knows what, you know, some things just were meant to fail. That obviously was. I did get my weather strip back on. It was enough sticky gooiness to attach right back on there, which I like. So again, I, when I do this, I want everything to go back just like it was. I want it to be factory. I want it to be stock. I don't want any blemishes. I don't want any mistakes. And that's what we got. So now let's get this back to the door panel. Get the door panel, you know, all the steps to get everything back in place. All right, everything is back in. It's time to start buttoning it up. Now, one thing. I did not record like trying to get all this back in there. It is difficult, it's tight. I do think it's better to do it this way than trying to remove the entire window and trim and everything. But just, no, like, so this, these are the bolts for your window track. I, as I tried to put the door actuator back in, you know, you start back here, you kind of wiggle it around the window track, get it back up to here. I was very careful to try to bend this window track as little as possible, because I don't know if it's plastic or metal, like you can at least, you can see it's at least plastic down here. I don't know what's going on. So I tried to bend it as little as possible. I didn't want it to break or snap or crack or anything else. Uh, I Hopefully, I think I did that successfully. From there, I put, uh, once it's past the window track, I put a bolt in there just to uh, hold it in place to prevent cracking that window track. Because again, I'd hope it's metal, but I don't know, man. So much stuff on these cars is plastic. From there, I made sure that this plug that goes through here, I made sure to plug that plug in because again, nothing will work if you don't plug it in. So I made sure that plugged in, made sure it's plugged in tight. From there, I got these cables in, and go ahead, pull your boots out, make sure they are in there correctly so it looks factory. That white plastic piece, you have to kind of, there's three little clips. Once you go in there situated, you gotta rotate the panel to get it just right. Then it slides back this way. That's locked into place. Once that is done, uh, I did put, I screwed in, you know, then I'm just gonna screw everything in. The drill panel, it's not in place. There is a snap right here on this side, it snaps in place. That way it's just, it's held in place right now as I put everything back together. You know, I made sure to check, make sure all these like little wires, you know, go ahead and put those back in place. Again, you don't have to, but it just makes it look more factory. If anybody else ever comes in behind you, does that go in there? Yeah, it does. If anybody ever comes in behind you, they're gonna think, oh yeah, nobody's, nothing's ever done to this car. It's completely factory. Like you always should leave things better than you found them. All right, uh, I did, went ahead, put both my winter track bolts on. I need to do my T30 Torxes for the latch. 10 million bolts all the way around on the inner door skin. Uh, the exterior handle, I need to put the actual gripping handle part, snap that back in place. I'm not quite sure how that works. Because when you, you know, to pull it out, I think it's just a kind of a tension fit thing. Uh, and because you just, and I don't know what happens here. You can see that black part, that is the latch part. I don't know how it interfaces with that exactly. But I'll try to figure that out. This part goes in last. Don't forget your rubber seals that go on both sides. You don't want to forget those because it's just going to you know, get water and leakage inside. It's not going to look as clean of an install. It's going to scratch up the paint. So don't forget your seals. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how that works. I'll figure that out. I assume that as I'm trying to put that in there, it'll become readily apparent. That's the hope. From there, you know, it had the little black plastic piece that these cup into that cups to the back of the door panel. Don't forget that. Then door panel. But it's all, it's all reassembly, and I'm gonna walk through that a little bit just because it is a little tricky, because you're like, oh, how did I take this apart? Like, how do these things fit together? That's why it's good to have video evidence. This door handle, the reinstall is surprisingly easy. I wasn't quite sure how it all interfaced. So it slides this way. So I did, I kind of put it in place here, 
put it in place here, slide it forward, and it works. Like it's that's all it is. Like put it in place, slide it forward, pops right in place. And basically, this piece just add, acts to stop it from sliding backwards. Then I was actually impressed with that stall. It's very easy, very simple. I love very simple. Oh, you know that should I put? I had to put that seal on first. I've not put that seal on. That's what's gone first. Let me uh, pop this back out this way, pop it back on. So I do these things because, you know, it happens. So this piece of trim dust, like the built in the plaster, are two little clips that clip onto the sheet metal here. And on this side, just so that when you are installing this and raising this, you don't fall out of place. If you're like, why oh, is this thing falling in place? I'm not in place. You don't have these clips in place to hold it in place as you're installing it. Your window bolt, you definitely don't want to forget about that because you don't want to put this whole thing together and then realize. Your window is not attached to the window switch to where it won't lift up and down. That would just be categorically bad. So definitely don't forget that one. Also, as you're putting all these things back together, don't forget to put these caps like this one and this one here back in place. Is there another one? No, that's it. Be sure to put those caps back in place. That's what's good to have a bucket or lay out all the pieces you've taken off in a bucket, have them laid out somewhere so that you can look back and like, okay, yeah, I haven't put this one back. Where does this one go? And just step by step, get all that stuff done. So this little guy is a bit tricky because you, you know, it's just a tight little spot. Probably shouldn't have plugged the plug in down there first, but it fits in there a certain way. There's a little gap in what is the door lock and the door handle. And so the cylinder fits in there. This part kind of fits in there. So it should all snap in place. It doesn't snap together securely. It's wrong, but you'll see a little slot for these cylinders for the cables. And it fits in there just like so. And that is how it's supposed to work. You push the button, it locks, it unlocks, this thing is done. <laughs>